Hey guys, it's Lisa and I'm here with another craft for a baby. So little KJ, you saw her name tag, you saw her cake topper up there. Now I am making her little month markers. So KJ is about to turn one month old. And so what better way to celebrate one month of being alive than having your new godmother who I just, I just decided right now I'm her godmother, but having her new godmother make her these month markers all the way up to a year. So I will be designing this in Silhouette Studio and we will be cutting and engraving this using our Glowforge. And this is filled in with some cool gold rub and buff. So if you wanna see how I did this, make sure you keep on watching. And while you're here, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So I am in Silhouette Studio. I'm about to set up my design. So um, I'm going to make these little signs four by six, no, I'm sorry, four by three, basically index card size. Um, because one, she's little, she's turning one month old, but two, um, you can fit more on a sheet. So it's also gonna be a savings for you when you're selling. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw my box. This is going to be my outline. So let's go right here. To the left side, we have our rectangle tool right here. We're gonna click on that, and I'm just gonna draw. I'm not gonna worry about the dimensions because I'm going to use the scale tool to resize it. So we're gonna select our, our rectangle. You'll see that it has a black outline around it. And then up here is our quick access toolbar. This changes based on what you have selected. In this case, I have my rectangle selected. So I wasn't that far off. So I'm gonna change my width. I'm gonna do four, I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm going to go right here, hit three, and then enter. And now you can see it's three inches high and four inches tall. Now this is going to be what cuts out on our Glowforge. And now I'm going to set up what will engrave. So we're gonna type out one, O-N-E, in case you forgot how to spell it. So my friend really likes um, the Medina font, Medina script really popular I'll link it in my bio but I'm doing Medina clean but there's a new version of that that I like not a new version there's a different version of that that's like Medina clean alt alternate basically it just is a little bit more swooshy than the original one it goes below the line so it works better for this sort of thing so I'm just gonna set this to the side. I'm not gonna worry about sizing it for that box quite yet because I wanna type out my months. So let's type out uh, month, M-O, let me do caps, M-O-N-T-H. I'm gonna click off and click back on so it has the black box around it. This makes it easier to change my font. And I'm going to do Brayden. And I'll link it in, link it in the description below. So I want this to be under there. Let's go ahead and do the same color, oops. And I actually want this to be spaced out a little bit. This looks a little bit cramped next to that. So we're gonna select this right here. And at the bottom of our text panel, we have character spacing right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend it. And look how that space is out a little bit. So I want that like open look with the font below, but I also want it to be um, a little bit wider than my font. I think it balances off, balances out that one a little bit better. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead, select both of these, and I'm just gonna do Control C for copy, Control V for paste. This is going to be for my next one. And then again, do this one, Control C, Control V, copy, paste. So this is for later. So now we're gonna take this design, and before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and weld my font. So let me zoom in. See these overlapping lines in here? Our text is set up to be individual letters made to look like they're going into each other. So right here we have them going into each other, but if I were to cut and engrave this, this would show a dead space in between there. All of those lines would cut. So I'm just gonna go right here, right click, weld. So now you can see this is welded. And now these are all together. Now the last step I'm going to do is I want Silhouette Studio to treat this as one big file. And the way I do that is I'm just gonna select both of these, right click, and make compound path. So essentially what I've just done is I told Silhouette, hey, take all of these lines, make them one big object. And you can tell if I double click, these are our points. You can see it shows up for the entire design. So that means I have this set up as one big object. So I just zoomed out 
and now I want to find the placement on my um, little card. I'm going to make this slightly smaller just because I want a little bit of space. So you can see this is set to 2.663 wide. You can see that up here too. Let's go ahead and do 2.5 and see how that looks. Oops, let me hit Control Z. Did you see that? I forgot to turn on this lock. This lock keeps the proportion, the aspect ratio. So let's do 2.5. And I'm pretty happy with that. So now because I have this group together, I can take my entire design and I'm just going to do some centering. So let's go right here, select our one month, center it right in there. And so now we have our first one ready. Now keep in mind when you do a few of these, they might look slightly off because of the calligraphy font. Like as I'm looking at this, I'm actually going to nudge it over just a tiny bit because it looks a little bit off. Now you can do whatever you like with that, that's up to you, but I have my own preferences with that. So you can tell one month is all set. I'm just gonna go over, move it to the side so I can show you how I do the next one. And then after that, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest just to get them done. So the next one, we're gonna do two months. So you can see that spacing increases. Double click. And I, while I double click, let me hit back because I like that space right there. While I double click, you can see we have that green line around there. That means we are in text edit mode. I'm going to hit Control A. If you're a Mac user, Control is the same as Command. And we're going to type in TWO. This allows me to quickly resize. So we're going to go right here. Let's zoom in so we can see this. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this right there. And let's weld this font. Weld. So now we have our two right there. Let's see if we need to align it. So I'm just selecting both of these. Up here, here's our align panel. So you can see it looks a little bit off. And the reason why is we had that big long swash at the front of our two. So I'm gonna use my mouse to kind of move it over as I go. And sorry, it keeps going extra because I'm holding it down. So I'm just gonna move it over like that. I'm gonna hit this button to zoom out so I can see the whole thing. So we're all set with that. So now I can take my entire design, select both of these, right click and make compound path. And actually before that do, I do that, I'm gonna make a copy of this because I forgot to. So let's select this, right click, make compound path. And now we can take this and resize this to 2.5, 2.5. Oh, and you look, I didn't have the aspect ratio locked again. So let's go right here. So you 2.5, hit enter. So now we have that set in there. So you'll notice that this these words are gonna be a little bit smaller because we have a longer word in there. So I'm actually just going to extend this so that they look about the same. Now, it doesn't matter because a baby can't turn two months and one month old on the same day. It just is impossible. So you don't have to worry too much about it because they won't be next to each other. So I'm gonna go right here and um, let me show you how I set these up for Glowforge and then I'm going to finish the rest of these so we can get going with the next part. So the one thing that I need to show you real quick is that Glowforge does different options by your line color, not your fill color. So right now everything has the same line color, red. So we're gonna take our font, we're gonna select it right here and we're gonna change our line color up here, the top left, this is our line tool and you can change it to whatever you want. So I'm gonna change it to the blue that we have on there. All right, so we have that all set. Let's view this whole thing. So I'm gonna move this to the side and we're gonna set up the rest of these so we can go. Okay guys, so I have this all set. I'm not gonna do the entire thing because it's gonna take too long. So I'm just gonna go ahead, grab all of these, these uh, signs. I'm gonna select both. And we're gonna do Control G to group and just continue to do that through the entire thing. And I'm not gonna group the entire design because I might want to move them around in Glowforge, but I'm just gonna group so this stays together. So just to review, they have different line color one line for the outside, one line color for the inside. So that way Glowforge will know, okay, one means cut, one means engrave. So I'm using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. This allows me to export as an SVG. So all you have to do is select what you're exporting out, go to file, save selection, save the hard drive, 
and then you would choose SVG right here. So I'm just gonna name it and then I'll see you in Glowforge. All right, so I am in my Glowforge app. I'm gonna go right here, new design, create. I'm gonna upload my file that I just worked on. So I have my SVG right here. Let's go ahead and upload that. So it's going to process. So you're gonna see in just a second, it's gonna switch the screen to the camera inside my Glowforge. All right, so we have right here, I have acrylic in my Glowforge right now that um, I got that acrylic from E Street Plastic. So you can see that's the brown masking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my entire design and I'm going to rotate it. So I have the whole thing design selected and I'm gonna turn this and rotate it. I'm gonna hold down the shift button that allows it to rotate in 45 degree increments. So now I have this right here and I'm gonna set this up uh, closer to the bottom. I'm gonna go and hit control A so I select everything in there. So I'm gonna line this up right here and now I just need to go, oops, sorry about that, and just fix some of this. I'm gonna set this up a little bit closer so I'm not really wasting any of my material. So let's go right here, let's bring this up. So I'm gonna kind of just adjust this as I go and then I'll show you how I set up my settings. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust a little bit more in a minute, but you can see right here we have unknown. I'm gonna go through and select medium clear acrylic. Now this is made for Glowforge proof grade settings, so it's not perf like it's not guaranteed for the plastic that I'm using from E Street Plastics, but I've used it several times and it seems to have worked really well. So I'm gonna go over here and nudge this over a little bit more to fix my alignment. And now I need to tell Glowforge the different functions that I'm doing with this. So you can see right here we have cut. We have cut for both actually. So we're gonna go right here, keep that on cut. So you can see proof grade, grade cut. And then right here for our acrylic right here, we're gonna do engrave. And we can just do an SD graphic, I'm happy with that. And now you can see my designs are set up with different colors. Now one thing to note, these look gray. And that means they're just out of the safe cutting area. So you can see as I move it, this gray box shows up. We're gonna move that over and now we're all set to go. Now, most of the time when I do clear acrylic, what I would be doing is before I export my SVG, I would be flipping this text here so that it engraves on the back of the clear. But the technique that I'm using today, we actually want it on the front, so we want it to face forward. So we're all happy with this. Let's go ahead and hit print. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna prepare it, it's gonna process, and then once we're done with that, it'll show me how long that this cut is going to take. Okay, it's gonna take a long time. It's gonna take 59 minutes. My Glowforge light is glowing, so I'm gonna press that button and I will see you in an hour. All right, so I'm just gonna do a little voiceover because the rest of this is pretty simple, but it does take a long time, so just to save you the details. So I took the little signs out. It'll have some dust in there, so you wanna take like a toothbrush or something to get that little residue out from the inside. So now I'm using something called Rub and Buff. It's like a wax type of coloring, and I'm putting it inside the little indents to the signs just to give it that shiny look. Now, um, some people will use um, a paint pen. That's fine, but I really like the richness of the color for Rub and Buff, so I'll link it in the description where I got it. Now I'm doing the back side. I wanted to make sure I did the Rub and Buff first because I needed that masking to kind of preserve the rest of the acrylic. And I just mixed for this one some brown and some white for a nice off-white creamy color. Just using a paintbrush, putting it on the back. Now, I wanted it to look a little bit more streaky, so I took the paint off my brush and started spreading it out a little bit more to get that streaky look. And then you just repeat this for 11 more months. So super simple, it does look really great if you are selling this, price it appropriately, but really cute, I really enjoy it. And in a second, I'm gonna say that I like it again. All right, guys, so here is one of my finished products. So we have the paint on the back, and then this is acrylic that's etched into, and I used Rub and Buff to fill in these areas. Now, a couple tricks I picked up as I went. So what I did is I, I put in Rough and, rough and Buff, Rub and Buff, 
And I, after I did this one, I actually grabbed a little paintbrush and I started filling in these areas a little bit more so that made it a little less clumpy. And then I let it dry a little bit with the masking still on. After that, I just took a toothbrush and kind of brushed on the inside of there to get some of those chunks out. And then little areas with my weeding tool, I kind of got the chunks out. But super cute. I really like the, the richness of the gold in here. I did try a paint marker and I just didn't, I didn't really like it. And it gives you a little bit more of a high-end fill, fill, feel as opposed to the vinyl. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials and trainings using Silhouette Studio and Glowforge, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos. And again, if you are interested in buying a new Glowforge, you can find out how you can save $500 on a new machine. Just find the link in the description below. And again, I forgot to mention this before, I will link some of the materials that I did in this video so you can go ahead, purchase it, and do your own. Thank you.